Uh, I also hope the colors are okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I hope so. Okay. So, uh, next talk will be uh, the pion nucleus of Yeah, it's, well, in short, it's pion drillion. So, different topic. Um, and I will talk about, uh, as you guess, mainly about the pion. That's why I call it pion drillion. So, it's pion induced uh, nucleon, nucleus drillion. I have to change here, right? Okay. Oh, you can, you can do it. I can do that? Okay, great. Better. So, uh, I'll talk about something that has been done in conjunction with uh, Federico Cecopieri, Santiago Noguera, and Sergio Scopetta. Sergio was here in the last week, I think. So, we talk about other things, but uh, I want to talk about Drelian. So, uh, we heard yesterday two talks. No, one talk about Drelian. It was uh, mainly focused on the fixed order uh, part, and I will talk on, on the W term. And as you guess, I will focus on, on the pion. So uh, I know this, there won't be any pion at EIC, but uh, what I want to say here is that if we know better the pion, in case of pion drillian, you can, we can uh, learn uh, from the pion things about the proton, right? So if you know one part better than the others, it, then the other side, we can deduce more things about the other. So uh, I will talk about the pion dynamics, which is better known than the the proton dynamics and the effects on drain cross section. So um, just pictured, I think, I think from Ted actually. So it's a it's a pi on proton. Then we go uh, to a lepton pair here. That's Drelian, and, and the Q square is just the mass mass square of the lepton pair. So um, the integrated version, you just have the PDF. Of the of the pi on one of the proton and the hot cross section. And actually, uh, before. Uh, is it yesterday that it was published? Where or is uh, Nobuo? He left. Okay, is here? Are oh, you here? <laughs> Sorry. So uh, until yesterday, <laughs> the only thing we knew about um, about the pion PDF was from Brenya. So since yesterday, this what's the other process you consider? It's, it's, really it's on, only only Brenya. Yeah. 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 So right. But also from direct photons. Yes, but uh, okay, right. But I think that the the, the feed that, that uh, is is known actually is mainly uh, that that feed for the PDF only takes into account Australian, right? So the photons is for the distribution amplitude, if I remember. No, no, it's for PDFs, oh, both, but okay. it's of course mostly constraining more. Yes, and, and of course it's very focused. So they use a pion cloud or something. So I know it's just the uh, pion proton and then producing photons, and people have used that to uh, something or other. Yeah. Yes. So if you take, that, that would be the, uh, an old field of um, a long time ago. And in, that would be uh, the data and feed of the, of the PDFs. So what can we learn about, um, about the pion? So in that case, they consider that the neural from the intuitive so cross-section the proton and they feed it the, um, the pion certain function at that time. And actually what we can do, if you have a model, uh, I'm gonna use here, is basically, uh, in some case, the scale of the model. So let's say um, that will be the PDFs, the feed of the PDF, and then you take the single moment uh, of fraction of the, um, the single moment, many moment, and you induce the momentum fraction of the, of the quarks inside the pion, and you take the feed results, and you take the, the, your model, and you just match it to the single moment fraction. And that's how you fix the scale of the model. So that's an old, uh, Way of doing that, and if you do that uh, leading other evolution, you find a Q naught of 0 0.29 GV and uh, to next leading order 0 0.43 GV, which is a really low scale. Okay, so that's that will be the scale of a non perturbative chiral model. Okay, and this exercise should be uh, done again with the new, the new booleans, I must say, of, uh, of the, of the booleans. Okay, so. Um, why should I use uh, an additional thing you here for the pion? The main thing is that it's a chiral uh, low energy model. And if you talk about pion, it should be chiral. That's the main thing. Uh, and he, he had a lot of successful um, results in the past. It's a really decent uh, approach of QCD for the pion. And we have quarks of freedom, which is really convenient when you talk about PDFs and stuffs. Uh, the constant quarks come, mass come from the gap equation. The pion is a Boston mode. It's a uh, bound state, this is a bit better, and we have a covariant regression scheme. So it's really good. And many people have worked on that, and actually even Lenny has paper on NJL. So that's uh, 
a really well-known framework that works for what is supposed to work. So it's uh, some PCD, but it, it works pretty well. So the thing about NGL, so mind the scale here, look at it, is that uh, when we are in the chiral limit, which means um, the mass of the pi on the zero, the, the, that's the distribution amplitude. The, P, the, the DA is one, okay? It's flat, it's very flat. And if you're not in the chiral limit, it's not flat, but it's almost flat. Look here, so it's um, almost flat. And the thing is, when you turn on evolution, just right away, and you don't see here, okay, there are, okay, so that will be NGL at 2G, so you see that you, we go right away the, the support, and you would have the asymptotic 6X, like 1 minus X is here, does it lines, and you have some data here that you don't see, but it's on, it will be on the, PDF on the web page, okay? So you just turn on evolution, and evolution does everything. So no worry about that. So the thing is that if you want to say thing about Drelian, so uh, first we need to recheck the scale uh, procedure that we had before. And what if instead of doing the, just matching the momentum fraction from the second million moment, we just don't map the final PDF on the Drelian cross section. So that's what we've done. And I think we could redo from, for other things. But then we, we took the integrated Drelian from uh, the data that I forgot to put here, that's uh, e, uh, E615, and that's the integrated version here. So we have the data, and what we did, we, we took a CTEC, uh, a nuclear CTEC here, and we took only the pi on, on the gel. And we tried to basically match the scale. So we, we changed the Q naught, and we see how it matches. So you see here the different versions, and actually what we find that the better fit, uh, the better chi-square we get, uh, chi-square of two, which is not bad, uh, is for um, a next to leading order here for Q naught of 0 0.46 GV, which is uh, compatible with what we had before. So that's the scale we're gonna use next. So the only three parameters I forgot to tell that before, the only three parameters we had uh, in the model was Q naught. So we fixed it to the scale which is uh, uh, in agreement with what we had before, so it's wonderful. And we use that scale everywhere in what's, what follows, okay? Anyway, so now we go to Drelian in unintegrated, which one was momentum, say, and we had to talk about uh, that full view. No, was because of the, what he said about the fixed order. So that will be fixed order, and uh, that's when we have QT of the Q, which is uh, not what we, we want here. So that's uh, another picture I took uh, inspired by TED talk. So you have QT here. And if you have QT of over Q, you would have, you expect fixed order and we know that it doesn't work. Okay, that's a problem. And if you have QT of over lambda, over the lambda, then we have, uh, you have TMDs, okay? And the TMD are typically, uh, uh, you know about that, this um, picture, 3D picture of the, of the nucleon. Okay. So now if you want to express the other expression of, of CSS, you would have, at that, that time it was like that, you had the PDF times, actually that's what I wanted, the PDF of each one times a non-perturbative pseudocode, they would call it like that. So that's the old formulation here, and then you have the B, the B star prescription. So in, in the model language, what we would have, it's similar, but then now it's, it's the TMD, okay? So uh, you have the TMD of the pi and the TMD of the proton, and in an ideal world, what you would do is, you, you would use uh, two full TMDs for both hadrons. At that time we started the calculation, there was no fit available, so now uh, we know from Andrea's talk that there is uh, some fit available for the, for the proton. So we decided to take something different, and what you would do, you would also, in the world, use the same model for both, there's, if you want to use models, there's no model that I know of that would describe properly uh, both the pi and the <laughs> proton, so too bad. But, um, so what we can do basically is we decided here to use a model for the pion, which is the NGL model, and use something really simple for the, okay, for, ah, oh, what do you see, thing? for the, um, the proton. So basically we have, uh, we use uh, an old, um, well, basically it's that paper, the College of Danowski paper of 10 years ago, for the um, proton, I know it's not the best and the most additive one, but that's uh, the thing we had in mind, just to check the, the, the framework and, and some PDFs. We took the CTEC 6 um, PDFs, and for the pion, we take the NGL model, okay? So it's been calculated by uh, Santiago and, uh, and Sergio years ago, 
three years ago, not a long time ago. We define the scale, and then we want to see how the, the KT dependence on the model um, goes into the data. Okay. So um, sometimes I have changed notation, so the, the uh, exponential of the Sulek of non perturbative should be just S. It depends on the notation. So that will be the, uh, the thing that, we, that's, uh, that will give us the non perturbative evolution is that exponential here. And we've seen during the, the workshop that some people have a different definition depending on the group. The Pavia group is a different one, but that was the, I think, the original uh, paper here. So what do we do? So first we separate. The, the pi n from the, um, the proton, so we have a square root here because usually people have it squared because you have two, two protons, right? So we take, the, we take the square root of that one here from Nadolsky, and that one here just comes from the dynamics of the model. So there's nothing else than the, than the model. And of course, what, what happens in the model is that we only have such a term. We don't have any, any q squared dependent because the model it just has q naught. It doesn't have any, any intrinsic q squared here. So that's what we do, and you see here, basically, that will be the NGL, um, plot of the NGL. We realize that basically that TMD can be factorized, that's convenient and not at the same time, into a PDF, which is one in the Carvel limit, as uh, I said before, times uh, the, the B or the, or the KT dependence. So that, that will be the expression here. And the sum is over the polyvinous uh, regulators here. If you take the chiral limit, believe me, it gives you, it separates the x, well, you can actually say, uh, see it. It, sep it separates the x, so that will be the only x, the support dependence, and the kt dependence. So that's really convenient because we can actually keep separated. So that's, that's cool. So what happens here, basically, as I said, in that case, um, the the Sudakov, the non-perturbative Sudakov would only be uh, that dependence uh, f prime prime of pi, as I say here, b, and uh, that's the, um, the Fourier transform on that dependence, and it's analytical completely here, and it gives you this uh, Bessel function, some Bessel functions. Okay, so, so that. No, so. You get you get it from when when you in, in the chiral limit only. So when you so what you solve from the very separate equation gives you the um, say the um, the kind of wave function of the of the pi, right? And when you put when you put that inside the definition of your TMD, you, you do the calculation and you find this. And then you can take the chiral limit, which is m pi goes to zero, and you end up with something like this. But actually, you get just this, okay? And that's what you get here. Exactly that. Well, it's the sum of that, okay, uh, to the polyvalent regulators here. And that that's analytical completely, so you just get this thing here, which is really convenient. So we don't know what would happen if you go uh, beyond the, the chiral limit. I, I don't think, you, I think it won't be analytical, but I don't think it would change much, but we don't know, because there would be evolution effects as well, which we don't know actually. So we just had that that will be the more perturbative Sudakov part of, okay. And what we did, we just assumed that the fact that would appear only at Q naught. So we don't know if that factorization of X and, and B would happen at a different scale. There's, there's no way we can know that so far. Okay, so just a, a plot of, uh, that will be the X axis and KT here. And that's the KT profile. So one, uh, the dotted one is just with the first term of the sum of the regulators and the red one is uh, the, the three terms, so the, full, um, the full thing here. So I wanted to, to check because that's the main point if is it Gaussian or not. So I tried to put some Gaussian on top of it to see if there was a way I could reproduce it as a Gaussian and uh, I tried this no way, so it's not Gaussian. And basically what you see is that the pion dynamics differs from the Gaussian. There's nothing to do with the Gaussian. And what it tells us that there's no, um, if you compare, yes. So, so which is Gaussian, the green one? The green ones are Gaussians. I, I tried different to with I don't remember. I just put it to try to put it on the on the line, but, uh, but then you wouldn't want to argue that for all the logical purposes, um, it's hard to distinguish. Yeah, and you, you will see the results. No. <laughs> okay, um, okay, you will see. It's really hard to, to see the difference. So basically, uh, and also there's no dependence on x or uh, any any mass of q squared well, or, or q um, in in the in the case of NGL. So it just depends on on nothing else than, than the model. There's no other dependence here. So, oh, sorry. you were saying that only in the chiral limit there is no x. 
Yeah, in chiral bit, which is what you are using here. Ah, so in the end you use the chiral bit. Yes, 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 because we, yeah, we use the chiral bit. Okay, so there is no accident. There is no accident. So uh, there are other approaches. Actually, uh, uh, there was another approach recently as well by uh, working collaborators. And they, they did something similar, but they actually fitted the Sudakov here. So they really put that, uh, say, um, that formed a shape here, and they fit it here. So in that case, they have, they have a dependence on Q and not in X in that case. So we have to fix some Q and then you see for different values of Q, so it's, it's M here, Q in their expression. And NGL is here and then you see the difference. So there's different shape with uh, different approaches. And then if you compare also our shape with what we take for the, for the proton, so, so that would be the, what we take for the proton here, you see that uh, it's completely different. But, We'll go to the results, you will see. So basically what we take, we take uh, next to leading log and next to leading other um, CTEC PDFs and we send coefficient as well. And also what is different in, in, uh, for both parts, so we have the proton is fixed by the Nadolsky approach uh, to that value, the Bmax. And for the pion, we had to, to kind of guess. So we took that expression here with the Q node we have, but also we, start, we, we checked that it was a stability upon that regulator. So if you change uh, a bit that regulator, it's not big change in the, in the results. Okay, so now <laughs> the results. So there are three different curves. So if you see, uh, that will be the, the solid one. The red solid is um, this, the NGL with that we have just shown before, 2.44. And in, in the dash one is 1.5. And the blue dashed would be, uh, if, we took, if we took the, the Nadolsky approach, okay? So, um, that will be like um, like a proton, a Gaussian almost uh, like. And you see uh, in, in a small QT, there's no difference between the curves. So you mean, this is fine proton. So for the proton, what we start, uh, you always took uh, on each of the Gaussian. Yes. And now you say, if you use the same one also for the body. Yes. That's what you mean. Right? Yes. If you take the same one for the, yeah, it will be like, um, and it doesn't change much at small, a small QT. And then after it changes some, somehow, but then we know that it's the fixed order part that is not known. So here you see we're pretty okay on the data. And basically uh, what, we can, what we can say is that there's no big difference if you use NGL or not. In uh, like worse than model, right? Not in the details. But a good thing, excuse me? Yeah, so we, we, take, we take the PDFs and there's also they take into account the, of course, the ISIS thing, yeah. But, um, okay. So the good thing is that with no free parameter except the Q that was fixed beforehand, we just we get the other of my two, which is uh, not bad, I must say. So we get that. And same thing if you just ch uh, check here for, um, for the, uh, that would be uh, before you had here the, the Grand mass here, range, and then you would have in uh, XF here, okay? So it's, it's really bad, a really high XF, but uh, it, it does pretty good at uh, lower values here, and especially at low QT. A large QT is becoming like, not even large, not, like a QT of about, about two, it's not working anymore. Okay, so that's the main result of the thing, and we just go there, and we don't see a big difference between, um, say, a Gaussian-like or, dynamics of the pion behavior. So just to, to show this, um, as we've seen yesterday from previous consideration, so at low uh, QT, there's a thesis here, so room to accommodate information from non-perturbative physics. But uh, what can we really learn if we don't know what happens at a fixed order regime? So you see here, and you should, here you should continue with that curve. So pick that part here and plug it here, and you see, anyway, there's, there's a problem at, uh, at the fixed order regime here. But Nobuo says he has a possible solution, so maybe somehow we are, can accommodate. So no, I, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's a conclusion, but um, I was pretty happy with those results. But then when you learn that we don't even know how it works in the, in the PQCD regime, what can I say? Is it like, is it really worth <laughs> saying something here? Well, I think it's not bad, but um, I hope we're gonna find a solution for that region too. Uh, for 3M, that's, that's the same, that's exactly the same one. 
This well, is very right? It's Australian. That also uh, it's, yeah. it's playing so, on the same. Are you missed the conversation with your peers today? Is there any problem? For the yes, there's a problem. <laughs> Low energy? Oh, really? Yes, so maybe we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fixed solar is not working. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And I think Sorry. it's even worse for uh, for yeah. the problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, so just um, not trying to compare with other approaches. So, so there was also a first evaluation by uh, Barbara and Peter Schweitzer, I think, and when mm -hmm. they had the calculation for the, for the pion um, TMD, and mm -hmm. they compared with the data with only a Gaussian. So they took a Gaussian and it did pretty well as well at, uh, at, low, uh, at low QT with only a Gaussian. And, but um, they had to fix somehow the normalization and, and such. So here, so that will be Barbara's results, our results, and the fit of uh, Wang and Schmidt and collaborators. So you see even if we're sitting without the fixed order or whatever problems, they also, everybody goes negative, so as it should be. So, and actually I must say, if you compare the chi-square, what we, so I can calculate the chi-square, which doesn't mean anything, uh, that I get here with only NGL and the chi-square they, they get with the fit, we're not doing bad. And I must say that actually the chi-square for, for NGL, that's better than if I only use the PP-like version. Like, there's a 50% difference in the chi-square. So NGL is slightly better. But um, what does it mean with that state here? So maybe one day when we, we are doing really well, <laughs> that could mean something, right? So also another place where we could see is basically the uh, average QT. So there's, uh, there's somehow difference. So the data are the black, are in black here. And so NGL would be the full red, solid red. And then you would see if I only take um, PP-like, I have the dashed red line. So you can see some tiny differences in some windows, like here, for instance, but it's not a lot. And here, so that would be without any evolution. That's what it would get. And here you see that you really need evolution. So it's the same here, no evolution at all. And uh, evolution with the model. So no big deal about the, about the pion. So, uh, so the question was, that was a question from the beginning. Can the pions, Richard, can, can that be extracted from, from Drelian? It doesn't look to me that it's, um, that's possible right now because you, you see this, there's, no, there's not a huge difference and actually, uh, almost nothing in the data we have now. So maybe in some windows at some point, but not right now. So now I think the question is, can the pion help the proton? So um, knowing that chirosymmetry drives the pion, so it's completely driven by the chirosymmetry, it's now we have uh, less parameters due to that. Maybe the fact that we know the pion would help us knowing better the proton. So if you know the pion pretty well, we can uh, eliminate, isolate some parameters of the, of the proton. So it will be less symmetric than PP. And here we could just try to just uh, forget about, <coughs> forget about <laughs> one part because you know the pion pretty well, say, or you know it better than the, than the proton and try actually to, um, to learn more about, about the proton. So I, I don't know, that would be something to think of actually. And so I already go to the conclusions. So we studied here a pion proton collision, so Drelian to, and we have included the non perturbative dynamics of the pion to a model, NGL, and there's a slight change uh, in shape respect to the to only Gaussians, and we see that it's not a big difference. But the thing that's missing too, I must say, that we have to think of is how to include, uh, so GK would be, sometimes we call it G1, the one that goes with, uh, with the logarithm of the, of the mass, the mass. So there's something we have to include here that was not included. So we could either try to take the, the way of trying to fit, as was done by, uh, by Schmidt and collaborators, to fit uh, that parameter to, to Drelian and then try to learn about the proton or keep it that way. I don't know. The thing is that we have to go further in that thing. So about EIC physics, um, I think we could use but there won't be any pion, so uh, I think it's clear. We could use the pion, as I said, to lower some uncertainties from uh, the pion to try to disable some symmetry effects as uh, in the of PP, so maybe we could use that and have less symmetry effects that could maybe come into account. And it seems there will be a pion target series, the JLAP. So that would be like, um, 
it looks like a textbook case, but uh, they're gonna do, uh, I don't know how exactly, but uh, a pion target it is. So that's the thing that we have, maybe have to, to study too, because you would have the same objects, so pion target and pion fragmentation, you can do the same model and stuff. So we can learn more about the framework and there's a framework actually of, uh, of evolution for the pion case. That will be also relevant maybe for the framework, I would say. And of course, beyond the IC, it's it's relevant for compass, and we could try to lose to to to, to use it to know more about the parameter uh, uh, parameters, and really find the scale and TMD phenomenology scale, because we always consider that we have Q naught for Vigla, but what happens with uh, with the VT dependent? So we don't know much. So thank you very much. So you mentioned the GK, right? The GK yes. part, you can take it from the program market because it is supposed to be also the university. Yeah, that's specifically the bias. Yeah, that's what we wanted to, 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 to think of. And the first idea was to be to be clean, just to take NGL and see what happened. Not doing bad. So now can we try to ref to actually refit the the GK from, from the from the program to see if uh, not to refit but to redefine with the, with the model. As actually, that's what um, Schmidt and Collators did here. So in, in, that, in that case, they actually, we did a fit. We can show it here. <laughs> here, look, that would be the, uh, the GK, right? Yeah, but this GK has to be the same as... Well. It's not, actually. I think they have, it's different. Then, uh, and it has more. So you think it's, it, it, it must be universal, yes. even for the pie? For the pie? Yes. Okay. Yeah, maybe worthwhile to point out that there are some things that are known about the pion yeah. and other sources. One, the, the pion form factor represents a constraint on the pion wave function. Uh, two, uh, Ben reminds me that about 20 years ago there were Fermi lab experiments, pion looks to two checks, which learned a lot about the transfer structure of the pion I agree. and about the distribution. Of Three, uh, there are some more recent uh, solutions to the beta cell theory or There are many of them, I think. Yeah. And also, there are the, how do you call it, the, the form factor. The, um, there's a form factor as well that is not the one. You know, I agree, but still, it's, I think it's better known uh, in, in, in the term of, of PDFs. Maybe it's, I think it's, it's better known than in the front. So of course there are many things we don't know about the uh, about the pion, but um, yeah. I think in that sense. Any other questions? Yes. Maybe question to you and Miguel. So when you calculate the other symmetries, but um, you need to have the T the pion. So what was interesting in I, I, we, I, we haven't checked. So if you take the same framework on Andrelian, yeah, on Andrelian for Compass, we, we, we should do that actually, but uh, we wanted to check first uh, the conclusion we would, would get here. So we, we, could, we could do that. I, I don't know, I have to check exactly the ranges. I, I know those guys have done that actually. They have predictions for Compass. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know, so I would have to see uh, the, the range in, uh, in, in PT and uh, in biomass and all these things. But uh, we can do the same thing. So now it will still be models. So, you know, to do. If you want, we can do it. Something that we observe when uh, we use the uh, Compass is that the Compass experiment in models have a more exponential folding behavior than the other one. You mean for models for, for, for the proton? Yes. The point is that uh, the reason to put this is to don't get back to the universal structure. You should go by one by exchange. And you will give the exponential equation. The entire thing was better than in the most popular solution. I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Right? It was a comment. It was a comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, okay, okay. So, what, 
Okay, we can talk about it. Uh, lots of comments. Still have a question. I just, since uh, Jerry reminded his work, but then I wanted to remind that we also did ABS QCD uh, model of uh, defining TMDs. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think maybe so. Uh, I did the same as you did, but I'm not leaving. <laughs> 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 no, 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 it's right. There, are, there are many things we don't know about the client, but, but I think it's uh, still for, for those scales we, we know much better. And also, um, since it will be, it seems there will be a, 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 a Pion series, that would be great to actually test uh, the models and then, and the cross maybe cross evolution in, in big lab evolution in, in in B and all those things for the Pion. That would be great. So that's. Okay, let's thank Aurora again. Uh, yeah, that's the copy break we still have two for. Okay, and uh, on the printed version is only one, but uh, uh, on the online version there are two. So the first probably being by Angela, uh, analysis QC, and then the second probably being by Frank Patra and the remote about the higher order fraction shared with the other side. So we click the remote. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs>